Good morning. Uh, my name is Sandy Spinagle. I am the founder and president, owner, everything, you know, of Platinum PR. And we are a public relations and marketing firm in Shepherdstown, headquartered in Shepherdstown, West Virginia, but obviously use space here at Cowork Frederick as well. So just to give you a little bit of background about myself, I uh, grew up in Virginia and moved to West Virginia when I went to college. I went to Shepherd College and graduated from there with a degree in economics and business administration. So of course, I am perfectly well suited to be doing communications work. Um, but I started my career in economic development and that has turned into a specialty, an area of unusual expertise for us with the company. And I thoroughly enjoy continuing that economic development work um, in a consultant basis. Um, so providing communications, marketing services for economic development and tourism offices is our niche, is our you know, area of expertise. I started the business back in 2002, officially. Um, in 2001, I was approached by a girlfriend who wanted me to partner with her um, with my marketing experience and her PR experience at the time. Thought we could you know, blend it together and you know, make a perfect team. As it turns out, life happens a little bit and um, we didn't end up doing that. She you know, started a family and um, we went in different ways. But in 2002, I um, officially started the business. Once she planted the seed, I was hooked and um, loved the idea and decided to run with it. So we, um, I started the business out of my house. I was actually still working part-time uh, when I first started and uh, eventually grew it to a point where I was able to come get out of my house, get into an office space um, in Shepherdstown, have now moved one other time since then um, in Shepherdstown. This co-work arrangement is actually, I think, my third office in Frederick, um, but has truly been, honestly, and I'm not just saying that because I'm sitting here in this room, has been the best fit for me. Um, it is, you know, I've been in other scenarios where I've been, you know, kind of the stepchild coming in and, um, you know, sharing a desk as needed and things like that, and it um, doesn't have the sense of community that, this and you have created here in this environment. So that's been really nice. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, our target, our business niche is targeted communications for economic development and tourism organizations, but we have done work for other companies and we enjoy that variety. Um, we've had the pleasure of working with Blue Ridge Community and Technical College, um, also located in West Virginia, uh, since they were created. We helped them with their name change um, we started working with them when they relocated from Shepherdstown to Martinsburg um, and did you know everything with them um, until eventually they created, I think, about a 20-person office um, that replaced um, my little three-person operation. So um, it's nice that we were so successful that they needed to hire that many people. Unfortunately, that was the business model, was to um, work ourselves out of a job. So not a lesson I would recommend, not something that I would recommend for you. Try to find you know, a need so that you can uh, establish long-term ongoing relationships with people. Um, we also worked um, in an unusual niche market um, for us, which was a veterinary medicine. And we worked within the veterinary field for um, about four years and became really engrossed um, in that particular industry. And again, that was fun, aside from being a dog owner and um, you know, just loving animals in general, it provided an interesting um, market for us. So um, a lot of times we will work with organizations that do not have an internal communications department. You know, we'll provide those services. So small to medium sized organizations um, that don't have that person or that full department, and we can do that for them. Uh, and we don't provide graphic design services, so we work with graphic designers, programmers, printers, photographers, all that stuff. Our piece is um, in the planning and implementation of their communication strategy. Um, and then get to bring in fun partners as needed. Some of the lessons learned that I was going to share today, um, and I'm curious of other thoughts and concepts and things like that. Um, from an HR perspective, I broke it down into a couple of areas. Human resources, business development and marketing, partnerships, planning, 
and not being afraid to seek advice. So seeking advice probably is, for me, was a kind of an other category, a big catch-all. If it didn't fit into one of those areas, then don't be afraid to ask somebody who's been doing this, which is a beautiful arrangement for these um, sessions, you know, to have a conversation. It's just, I hope it's less about me and more about what you guys can share and kind of the conversation that we can get into. But from a HR perspective, um, I like interns. And I've always had an intern, you know, at least a couple throughout the year, um, being one block from Shepherd University's campus um, is, has been a huge um, resource for us, um, you know, has been a great benefit for us. And, um, you know, over the years, I tried to remember all of the interns that we've had, and to be perfectly honest, I could not remember them all. Um, we've had at least 20 of them. Um, over the last, you know, 11, 10, 11, 12 years. So uh, it's been interesting. In the last two employees that I've had, they both started out as interns. And um, so I like that environment. You know, it's basically a three month interview that I'm conducting with them and they just don't know it. So it, you know, lets, lets me learn if the work styles are similar, if um, they're teachable, if they're trainable. We can get along. Um, it's a small office. I've got a small team, and um, I need to have somebody that, from a personality perspective and a work style, work ethic, that we can complement one another. Do you get a chance to interview your interns before selecting them? How's that, that process? I do. I do. There have honestly been times when um, I've taken them sight unseen, and you know, send me a resume, send, and send me some writing samples, and with a you know killer recommendation from your professor, um, then you know, come on down, start tomorrow. Um, that has worked out a couple of times. Um, generally, there's a little bit more of a process, more of an interview process. Um, this year, we did interview several, and. Have two have a Monday, Wednesday, Friday intern and a Tuesday, Thursday intern. You know, the, we we all I think just had a flashback to the co days of college schedules. So um, it, I, I enjoy the flexibility and working with them. Um, something interesting this year was, um, although when I take this back, uh, we do interview, um, but I did not interview one of them this year. Um, Sally, my colleague, interviewed one of them, and um, so that was interesting. That particular, the intern that she interviewed, they both both my interns start next week. The interview that Sally, uh, the intern that Sally interviewed, um, said that she's a morning person and she'd really like to start about six. Well, that's fabulous, but <laughs> um, I will not be here for the first couple of hours of your work day, and you're an intern. You're not a freelance employee, off kind of doing your own thing. So. Um, we had to bring her into a little bit more traditional work hours. <laughs> um, so I'm curious if by you know nine o'clock she's ready for an afternoon nap. I don't know. Um, I'll let you know next week. Um, and the we actually our first interns didn't even start from Shepherd. We had interns from West Virginia University um, that were living from the Eastern Panhandle of West Virginia, but going to school there, or I actually take that back, my first intern was from Radford, um, and she just had a baby last month, so that's the stuff like that that makes me feel really old. You know, she started out as a, um, you know, with me as a sophomore, junior in college, and then, you know, went through graduation and marriage and career and now children, so it's been a long time. Um, and then, what, five minutes, one more question. One of the things that we've been Kind of wrestling with is we also would like to get an intern for a cohort friend, mm -hmm. and, um, and and because we want to support and get the learning out experience, and we think that it, this is a great environment for an intern to come because you get to from a lot of people. But we we recognize that there's part of having an intern is training and equipping them for the career that they would go for, um, and we can do some of that. So your members can. But the other reason we need help is because there are things that we don't know how to do. Mm -hmm. So part of the task, in, at least in my mind, is also, okay, you gotta go read and research and talk to people and figure this out, figure sure. out how to do X. Um, and I, have you had a, do you, do you do that with your interns? Do you challenge them to do things beyond what 
you know how to do, or does, do you only mentor them in your areas? Um, no, definitely challenge them beyond my capabilities. I actually had an intern several years ago who was really video savvy, and um, I am not. Um, I purchased some software that, you know, on the computer, you know, so I Mac something or other, I don't even know. And truly at the end of the internship, she said, Sandy, I don't think you should be using this. Why don't you use, you know, you don't use Final Cut Pro, you can use, you know, mm -hmm. iMovie or something like that. And, um, cause I didn't, she didn't spend the time to train me. I didn't have time at that moment. Um, <laughs> but now I have this, and other interns and other employees have used it, but I like interns that can bring something to the table. Um, but one of the things that we do, I do with all interns, is kind of sit down on day one and have a conversation about what their goals and expectations and what my goals and expectations are. Um, you know, at the end of the internship, I would like to have gotten something of value from them, but it's not about me, it's about them. And um, so I want to have gotten something great from them, but I also want them to have some phenomenal portfolio pieces. You know, I want them to have, you know, articles that they have, you know, written, ghost written, and have ultimately been published, or um, events that we have, you know, promoted um, and, you know, publicized throughout the media and their, the results of their efforts are there. Um, maybe an ad, the content from an ad that they, you know, had a hand in creating, um, ultimately gets published. Yes. Things like that. So um, we do try to figure out um, what their area of interest is and their particular skill set, um, and then help all of us. It's having interns is very time consuming. Anybody who has interns knows that. Um, and it is about their experience. It's not just about getting, you know, really inexpensive labor. Yeah. Um, so, but, um, you know, my other HR related topic was um, always to have a backup plan. <laughs> um, you know, when you get into hiring employees, um, I'll never forget one day, I think it was 2011. It seems like yesterday, but um, I literally in one day had three people call me and um, for one reason or another had to stop being a freelance for me, um, you know, quit a full-time job and um, I was getting my backup plan and then couldn't take the job that I had just offered. So um, once I stopped weeping on my desk, I, you know, shook myself off and um, ultimately came up with an even greater solution. So. Having a backup plan, truly everything happens for a reason. Um, I have maintained phenomenal relationships with interns. My former interns from the last four or five, six, seven years ago are always the first to like something on Facebook or retweet something for me on Twitter and things like that. So it's really nice to have um, the relationships that we've created over the years. Um, I have a former uh, intern, then employee, and she is now a client. So that, again, is a phenomenal relationship and I really enjoy it. But um, trusting employees, one of the things as a small business owner, as the founder, as the, you know, um, is to trust them and empower employees to do what they're good at. It might not be exactly the same way you were doing it um, or would have done it, um, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, it's just different. So um, that's challenging but fun at the same time is to learn to trust and learn to delegate and empower your team to be the best that they can and get them to want to be the best that they can. So, um, From a business development perspective um, and just an ongoing marketing, I um, went through a um, period of time where I stopped, stopped trying to get new work, um, which because I just got really busy with the, the work that I had, um, and that was one of the biggest mistakes I could have ever made. So um, never stop trying to get new work. Um, always be out there, you know, marketing yourself um, in elements, you know, practice what you preach um, for those of us that are, um, you know, in this marketing-related realm. So. Um, partnerships, uh, you know, over the years, obviously, I've had the pleasure of working with lots of different, you know, freelancers and writers and um, photographers, designers, everything. And um, be careful who you partner with. You know, they are, make sure that it's a relationship that you can um, 
you know, be proud of, and um, that they have the same, um, you know, work passions and interest and, you know, level of um, professionalism and quality of work that you're looking for. So. Um, just you know, being careful there. Um, I like the boutique environment. Um, I like that I'm not a kind of full service agency and we do all of this stuff. Um, I like being able to work with different graphic designers because they lend a, um, a different perspective. Um, relationships might be better suited. Um, you know, pricing, geography. You know, I mean, all different sorts of things kind of all get into play there. So I enjoy that. Um, obviously, and this is one of the things that I have struggled with. Um, you know, I created a business plan years ago, and um, truly, I couldn't tell you the last time I looked at it. You know, I accomplished those, you know, short and even extended, you know, two, three year out goals at the time, um, but I need to go back to it. So, um, again, do as I say, not as I do in that realm. It would be, um, you know, to continue that short and long-term planning both you know personally and professionally um, you know and how does your business um, you know for those my husband is also owns his own business and so um, he's gonna be ready to retire long before I am he talks about it every day and I'm not even the least bit ready yet but um, so but figuring out how that meshes together and how that how we'll be able to complement um, each other as a family um, through our careers it's a really common thing, right? I mean, you yeah. lay out a plan um, because you're supposed to, and it's good, and then you get busy with the business, and you're so busy just doing the things to grow the business, to deal with customers and all that, that it's it, it, it's difficult to turn your focus back and say, okay, I need, to, I need to plan some more, right? Because there's urgent stuff and important stuff that yeah. has to happen right now. Yeah. I think that's been a really common thing that at least we've heard from a lot of people that have started businesses, so. Well, and you talked about, you know, staff meetings and having, you know, team planning meetings and things like that, or partner meetings um, on a regular basis um, and the importance of that. Um, you know, that's the beauty of a partnership is that you have those, you have somebody to really bounce ideas off of um, and things. And so at times I've used, um, you know, my employees, probably good or bad, um, because, you know, kind of the, the buck stops here. Um, but at the same time, if I don't have buy-in, then I have nothing, yeah, you know, if I don't good. have their participation, so. Yeah. Um, and seeking advice, you know, there are different, um, you know, accountability groups these days that, um, you know, I think has started to become a, a fun new trend, at least it's new to me. Um, I have gotten engaged with a group um, over the last six months, and it's nice having a group, a small, an intimate group of, you know, trusted men or women that you can, um, you know, talk about your plans um, and, you know, get ideas and get thoughts. And you've got somebody every month or every week or every other week um, that's going to make you accountable to meeting those goals and, that you said you were going to. So. Um, you know, if you don't already have something, a peer group like that, um, it can be really beneficial. Um, so it's not quite to the level of a business coach. Um, it's much more informal, but I think the results um, could be very similar. Um, sure. And, you know, finding an environment like that. And then finally, it was just, you know, obviously having a pool of other experts. Um, you know, I'm not an attorney, I am not an accountant, and I should not be trying to be one. So I sh should never, you know, I wouldn't want somebody to, uh, um, I don't know, people think that they can do their own PR work. And I had a client recently who said um, that the results that um, she found when we helped her were far greater than what she was doing herself. Thank you. That's the way it's supposed to be. So it worked, um, and it does work. Um, and so I, but I think sometimes people think that they can do this themselves. You know, I know some basic math. Should I be, you know, filling my own tax returns? Are you kidding me? No. Um, so just knowing when to seek business advice, um, obviously, has been, you know, it's an ongoing lesson um, that we all learn. But, uh, does anybody else have questions aside from Julia? I don't know, I think I was uh, thinking about your um, 
the process of your business plan or, or the revisiting it. And yeah. I, I struggled with that a lot. Actually, it took me two months to re, just refocus my brain to get to the point that I could actually go back and reassess my goals. Because you get to the point where you're like, oh my god, I'm not achieving things because we're slow all of a sudden. Okay. And then you're like, oh yeah, I didn't check this off, check this off, check this off, check this off. But it's very loose, and I don't know how formal I should be or shouldn't be with it. I, I think these opportunities come along, and they um, they change it. I think you're, I, I guess I, what I've been struggling with is is how to hold myself accountable to it and make sure that the opportunities that are coming mesh with that. I don't know if you. Yeah. Well, and it's okay to adjust it when it's not right. right you know, right. when it's okay to go, this is, you know, this the plan is, was wrong, and I'm gonna do this other yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Or the, yeah. you know, the plan was right six months ago, but now six months later, the reality of the situation has changed, or my desires have changed, or sure, sure. And um, my business plan I created. Oh my gosh, I'm thinking like 2003, 2004, something like that. I actually had to take a class. Um, I took. Approach, because it was the only way I was going to do it. I was not going to, I am not a, you know, from 8 to 9 o'clock every Monday morning, I'm going to devote to doing X. I am not that kind of a person. So I needed to sign up for a class, pay for a class, um, and know that every month for, I don't know, it was like six months, every, it was once a month for six weeks. Yeah. Or six months, I guess. I don't really remember. It's been a long time. Um, and but what I haven't done is kind of gone back and revisited it. Um, but what I am doing is, again, trying to practice what I preach, which is the planning, you know, creating a communications plan, creating an editorial plan um, for our blogging schedule and for our e-newsletters and um, all of these different things that we do for our clients every single day. Why aren't we doing them for ourselves? And so that's, that's new for us and we are doing that now. Um, I'm very proud to say, but, um, the other thing, the advice that we give our clients is um, that communications plan still has to evolve um, and it can't sit on a shelf. I mean, I have a client's um, elements of a client communication plan that I look at every single day um, because we're executing it for them. And so I need to know how it evolves. But every month, you know, they have a board meeting, something happens, it's going to change the execution element. So, um, you just have to take the time. You just have to kind of take a step back every month. Give yourself a little bit of time to figure out what worked really well last month and what we need to do to change moving forward. And then I think you'll have a greater sense of having your stuff all together mm -hmm. um, and being you know, just a little bit more planned and purposeful and organized. And when you're organized and working, executing a plan, you're not as stressed out um, for sorry. that reason. Yeah, because I did exactly what you're talking about. And the thing you're saying from eight to nine, I'm not going to do this. It's hilarious because yeah. I literally yeah. spent like a week last week, like going through, I'm like, this is the day. And yeah. planning like by the hour, when and what kind of tasks. Not, not, yeah. You know, try to be general. Like, here's where my creative time is going to be. And here's where my business development time. And this is when admins. And then when the clock gets to noon and you're in the middle of the flow, you don't stop. And I think some people work really well with that type of rigid schedule. I don't. I'm a little bit more, um, uh, you know, I just know that in this, you know, some, at some point on Monday, it might be 9 o'clock Monday night um, before I get into it, but at some point on Monday, I need to have completed these things. So um, I actually, throughout the last, this has probably been the first year that I haven't done it, but Sunday nights were always my favorite night um, because Sunday nights, um, I don't know, my daughter would go to bed at a good time, my husband would be, you know, going to bed early to prepare for the week ahead, and um, that was a time when I could sit down, you know, with my to-do list for the week and figure out what I needed to do. Um, so I loved Sunday nights, but I slacked off on Sunday nights. Is there something good on television on Sunday nights? I don't know. <laughs> but uh, that, that seemed to work for me.